Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and this video is going to be a video on how to make a vintage box purse. This is my first tutorial, so I definitely was learning how to film and craft at the same time, but I really, really, really love this purse and I thought I'd share with you guys. So this box is actually a wooden box from Michaels. The handle is a drawer pull from Home Depot and then I have some little purse purse feet that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. I also put a lining inside of it. This is some velvet, some scrap velvet from Joann's Fabric. I have some push pins from the Dollar Tree. And that's pretty much all I use besides paint, um, spray paint, and some spray glaze as well. So I have a description box full of all of the materials and links to the materials so that way you can um, make one of your own if you want to make one that looks very similar but the possibilities are completely endless and you can basically do whatever it is that your heart desires with this it's definitely a blank slate so without further ado here's the tutorial So you're going to want to start by removing the hardware. Here I am getting ready to remove the latch in the front. So I start with a screwdriver, removing all four of the screws before I turn it around to the back and remove all of the screws for the hinges. So now that the hinge is off, you're going to want to prepare for the lining if you're doing a lining. So here I am using a piece of paper and I'm kind of marking with my fingers the outline of the shape of the box so that way I can make a lining for the inside of the box. Now this is optional so you don't have to do this. If you're not going to add a lining, you can go ahead and skip this part. But all I'm doing is pinching the edges and trying to make a shape in the paper before I cut it out and get the shape for the top and the bottom piece. So this is going to serve as a pattern for the top and the bottom of the lining. Once you have your pattern piece cut out, you're gonna to wanna to put it inside of the box to make sure that it fits and trim as necessary so that way it fits comfortably. It doesn't have to necessarily be perfect because you're gonna have it tufted and you're gonna paint the inside of it the color of the lining. So if it's not perfect, it won't be very noticeable at all, especially with all the cushioning from it being a tufted lining. So you're just gonna keep on messing with it until it's perfect or as close to perfect as you can get it. Once you get your piece as close to perfect as possible, you're going to want to head, go ahead and cut it out on a piece of foam. The reason I decided to start with the foam first is because you want to be able to measure the side walls with the foam already in there, since the side walls are going to rest on top of the bottom. So you're going to do this first. Once you have your oval piece cut out, go ahead and put it in and grab your sewing gauge or a ruler and measure the depth of the box on the side walls and that's going to be the same depth for the the straight pieces and the rounded corners so you're going to do that and then you're going to want to transfer transfer your measurements to a piece of paper now these measurements are going to change because once the foam is added it's going to take up more space than a piece of paper would so my measurements aren't 100 percent accurate and i didn't realize that until i started putting the foam pieces in but you're going to use that the pieces of paper that you make as a guide to cut the foam initially and then once you have your foam cut out you're going to Stick it in the box and you're going to trim as necessary till you get a fit that you are happy with. So here I am laying out my pieces 
on a piece of foam and getting ready to cut it so that way I can place it inside of my box and lay it to check the, the fit. So here as I'm putting in the sidewalls, you will see that they do eventually fit perfectly, but that's because I had to keep trimming down a little and then putting it back and then trimming it some more and putting it back some more. Since this is my first um, pattern like this or project like this, it did take a little bit of trial and error as I was filming to get the, the perfect end result or the result that I was looking for. Your ideal fit would be to have the foam touch flush against the back wall so when you glue it on, there are no gaps. Once you have your pieces cut out, you're gonna wanna put them to the side and grab your sandpaper and go ahead and sand that box out and get a smooth finish for you to lay your paint or your stain or whatever. I focus mainly on the outsides of the box since we are going to cover the inside. They don't need as much attention, but I did make sure to get the, the upper lip about an inch in so that way whatever pieces of the box poke out get a good finish um, or a good foundation for that paint on the inside. So I do sand it a little on the inside, but I don't go very far. I go about an inch in. So here I am just sanding it out and then I'll see you in the next step. Once you are done sanding, you can go ahead and start painting so that way your paint is drying while you're starting to prep for the lining. So here I am laying out my pieces of foam on the fabric and this is the wrong side of the fabric. I'm using a velvet and I'm putting it spaced out enough so that way I can cut a seam allowance. Um, nothing in particular, I kind of eyeballed it, but enough of a seam allowance so that way I can fold over both the foam and the cardboard pieces and glue it tightly on, or tautly so that way when I tuft it, you can definitely see the dimples in the fabric and the cushion. So here I am just giving you an example of what I mean by leaving enough on the edge to fold over and glue it down. So now I'm going to take my cardboard piece and use my foam pattern pieces as a outline or a guide to cut around for my cardboard. You're going to want to cut enough cardboard that each of the foam pieces have a cardboard backing for it. So this is what I'm doing, making sure that I have enough cardboard pieces to match all of the foam pieces that I have. I also did the same thing with my fabric. I'm going to show you how to assemble your pieces so that way you have a tufted cushion. So here we go. You're going to want to get your glue gun, your foam, your cardboard, and your fabric. First you're going to want to glue your cardboard to your foam like I'm doing here. Once your foam is attached to the cardboard, you're going to want to go ahead and grab your fabric. Make sure that you put the foam side down on the wrong side of the fabric and you're going to want to glue each side one at a time, sort of making it look like you're wrapping a present. Go ahead and take your time with this.
Once your fabric is nice and attached, you're going to want to grab your pliers and your push pins because it's time to tuft. You can decide what pattern or how many tufts you want to add. I decided to go with five. So all you're going to do is stick your push pin in, flip it over to the back, grab your pliers, and you're going to want to bend your push pin, the little prong, all the way to the side and then squish it as tight as you can with the pliers squeeze it so it's nice and tight you can always go back if it wiggles a little and put some hot glue on it so it doesn't move but if it's tight enough and it's staying then you don't have to worry about it because once you glue it onto the box itself they won't move anymore so here I am repeating the step and you're gonna want to go ahead and do this with all of your pieces I just did the rest off camera to save time in the video Now I'm adding purse feet. These are definitely optional, but I went ahead and pre-drilled my holes off camera to save time. So what you're gonna do is take one of the feet, stick it inside of the hole, and then you're gonna open the prongs. They're really easy to use and don't require any tools to insert them besides drilling the hole. Once your purse feet are in, you can go ahead and start adding on some of the other hardware. I started with the bottom clasp while the top of my box was still drying. Now to start gluing in the lining. If you're not gonna do a lining, you can go ahead and skip past this portion. But like when we've started cutting it, we're going to insert the bottom lining first, so that way when we add in the side walls, everything can line up the way that we cut it. So here I am going to test the sidewalls for fit. I didn't glue them down initially because I thought I was going to use a chain to connect the top and the bottom, but I didn't realize that glue wasn't going to be strong enough to hold the chain, so I ended up omitting it in the end. So if you are going to omit the chain, go ahead and glue those sidewalls in right now. Now I'm going to add the hinges back onto the purse, starting with the bottom of the purse. added the handle to the top of the purse off camera to save time but basically I just screwed holes the width of the handle and then I purchased shorter screws because the wood on the box is so thin that the screws that are included with the handle were too long. So I added shorter screws and some washers and that's how I attached the handle. Once all the hardware is on, I start gluing the lining to the top of the box. Keep in mind that I did eventually remove the chain because it was just not going to hold up with the weight of the box and I couldn't screw the chain in because of how thin the box was. I knew that screwing anything on there would probably tear it up later. Once the hardware is on, your purse is complete. Don't forget to check the description box for links to the materials I used. Also, leave a comment if you have any questions. I hope you found this video helpful. I look forward to making more. Please like and subscribe. See you in my next video. Bye.